What does ammonia have to do with food? That's a strange question, right? I mean, why in the world would ammonia be a part of the food I eat? Well, we're glad you're here. When most people think of ammonia, they probably think of household cleaners. I'll bet you can smell it in your mind, can't you? Ammonia exists in many products, and household cleaners are merely one of them. But there is so much more to ammonia than you may know beyond products. The fact is, your body produces about 4,200 milligrams of ammonia every single day. It's a natural component of all plants and animals. It's not too complicated. It's essential for life. Ammonia is, is made up of nitrogen and, and hydrogen. We have ammonia and nitrogen all over the place. And we find it in food, we have it in the soil, we have it in our bodies. It's just part of our natural environment. About 1900, it was realized that the factor limiting human population growth was nitrogen availability. And this is the factor limiting plant growth, which in turn limits human um, population. And so then there became a, a race to acquire nitrogen industrial. And that's where for Tabor comes in and comes up with a, a process that allow the incorporation of atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia. Ammonia is used all over the world to enrich soil to grow crops. That's a pretty big deal considering all the people we have to feed. Over the last 50 to 60 years, we had to double the amount of food we produce. Today, we're just under 7 billion people, probably going to move to somewhere between 9 and 10 by the year 2050. That's what the UN is projecting. And we almost have to double the, the, the production of food again uh, in order to feed all those 9 or 10 billion people. All right, so if ammonia is everywhere and an essential part of growing food, then it must be in a lot of food, right? Well, yes. From cheese to potato chips to peanut butter to raisins. Ammonia is present in all kinds of foods we eat. Recently, there has been some discussion in the media about ammonia and one food in particular, beef. Okay, so how does beef stack up against other foods? For perspective, let's take a look at the cheeseburger. There's more ammonia in the bun, the condiments, and the cheese than in the beef. But ammonia can play another role in food. One company, BPI, came up with an innovation that slightly elevates the ammonia already present in the beef. The reason? E. coli. Escherichia coli, E. coli, is a very diverse group of organisms. Some people say there's 600 to 650 different types of E. coli. Originally, we thought of E. coli 0157 as being simply a problem in ground beef. And we've learned that it turns up in a lot of places. We've had E. coli outbreaks with spinach, with lettuce, strawberries. The thing about E. coli 0157H7 is, is that you know, it causes devastating uh, illness at times, um, death, and leaves victims who do survive scarred for life. It's really not a bug that should be taken lightly. BPI chose to use ammonium hydroxide and, and ammonia, which is a very strong base. Low pH is acid, high pH is the basis. Because E. coli grew up in an acid environment, it's kind of a foreign world for the bacteria, and it's very effective and lethal against gram-negative bacteria, which E. coli is one. We know with regards to ammonium hydroxide that the the level that we increase the natural ammonium hydroxide that's existing in the meat is extremely small. We also know unequivocally that it's safe for human consumption. We do know that it is deadly to harmful bacteria. And in this instance, that is enemy number one. If you can, if you can do something to that product that, that only enhances something there that, that's there already naturally, uh, then that's a good thing. There is a reason that we have modern industrialized agriculture. And that's because there are food needs here and across the world. And we have people who are innovators, who are working to take a naturally occurring element like ammonia and doing all of the testing, all of the research, working with respected partners at universities and in government agencies to ensure that what they're doing is safe. I think it would be a mistake for us to have a technology, whether it's ammonia or, or anything, that's available to us that can reduce the risk of E. coli 0157 in humans and then not use it. Check out these sites for more information about food safety.